church cupolas and small wooden houses. This is where the Gagauz live. A poet once wrote that they're a mysterious people. They're proud of their history and traditions. Ludmila Karakaban Marin has devoted her life to those traditions. In her home village, Besharma, she runs a museum that her father founded 40 years ago. Something's always going on in our museum. School classes receive instruction here. Students, doctoral candidates and professors visit us. We do everything to make sure that our museum is really lively. The Gagauz, most of whom are Christians, speak a language related to Turkish. Their ancestors, an ancient Turkic people, probably came from Central Asia. In the museum, Ludmilla collects archaeological finds, documents and stories about everyday life. As many as 15 people used to live in a small space like this corner. Parents, grandparents, young married couples, and children, of course. The Gagauz normally had large families. The more children a family had, the better it could survive difficult times. Oppression, wars, famines. The Gagauz have withstood them all. Today, as in the past, they lead modest lives, cultivating sweet corn and vegetables and making wine. They've meanwhile gained a large degree of autonomy within the Republic of Moldova with their own parliament, their own flag, and their own governor. We aren't seeking enemies, but friends. We don't quarrel about our language. We don't say we have to orient ourselves towards Russia or the West. We want a strong Gagauzia within a democratic Moldovan state. The Lenin monument in the center of the city of Komrat is a relic of earlier times. In Gagauzia, the communists retained a strong presence even after the collapse of the Soviet Union. On Sunday, elections will be held right across Moldova. Pro-Western and pro-Russian forces are competing for votes. This is the third parliamentary election within two years, the result of a political stalemate. The Gagauz are divided. Many people here speak Russian along with Gagauz and feel strongly connected to Russia. Older people in particular mistrust the West. But Lumila sees the future of her country in the European Union. She's convinced that would fuel its development. Many students at the University of Gagauzia agree. They want to become attorneys or economists and are diligently learning foreign languages, including German. They want to move abroad because here they can often find only poorly paid jobs or none at all. I'd like to go to Germany to work or maybe study there. With the goal of earning a lot of money, then returning and helping my country advance. Ludmila Karakaban Marin wanted to come to Germany too, to personally accept the prize her museum was awarded. But the trip would have cost her 3,000 euros, and she doesn't have the money. The prize was very prestigious for us. We are very proud to gain this recognition and that our work should be held in high esteem. Ludmilla believes Europe could offer new opportunities to a small people like hers. And she hopes more Western Europeans will soon come to visit Gagauzia to see what it's like for themselves.